This is the small rig 4324, which is a three section um, overhead boom mount for your desk to put a camera or a light overhead on the desk. So I was sent this to review for free. If you wanted to purchase it, it's going to cost you about $60 to $70. They haven't paid me for my review, and so my opinions remain my own. So all of the packaging was cardboard or paper, and inside of the box, pretty well protected by the way the cardboard was folded around it, is the main boom arm here. It's a three-section boom arm, and it has two of these locking hinges on it. And so you can turn these dials to unlock the hinge and make it relatively easy to move, and then you can turn the dials to the lock position to keep them from moving at all. Um, on the base here, it has a lock and unlock where it can swivel or pull off. And then the actual attachment point here, pretty hefty. It has a rubber pad on the top piece here that will protect the top of your table. Um, the bottom piece does not have a rubber pad on it. There's it's just a, a metal cup there. Now I'm going to check the accessory box. The only thing I know it comes with is a phone grabbing tool and kind of Velcro ties. Um, and it has a small um, manual type page here. So it does not look like it comes with a rubber pad for this bottom to protect the bottom of your table. So you'll either have to provide your own little rubber pad there, or if you don't care about the bottom of your table having metal against it, you can just tighten that up. Um, these are pretty nice. The little Velcro, essentially reusable zip ties for putting cables around the um, arms and holding cables to the arms. So if you're putting something up with a cable on it. And then this here is a cell phone grabbing tool. It has a quarter by 20 on the bottom here, so you could screw that on and hold a cell phone instead of just a camera. All right, so this is a pretty good size clamp. Um, it has just a hair under three inches there of, of size that it can clamp. Um, going back to the desk here, it's two and three quarters to the, from the, to the back edge of it. Um, you know, you'd probably want least I'd say two inches of desk in this thing and I believe this is made out of aluminum and it's certainly non-ferrous magnet the only thing that really reacts to the magnet is this metal bit here um, so that metal plate there is ferromagnetic maybe the screw um, but like this looks to be stainless steel and I believe that's aluminum it's you know not super heavy it's kind of big and chunky but it's not super heavy it has a really nice handle here to lock that thing down so the edge of this table has a little rounded bit there. That's not at all a problem you know, for the, the size of this guy. I'm just using some of the cardboard packaging here to protect the bottom of this wood from the clamp. But you can see here it fits well past the, um, well past the roundness of that table there. And that was super easy to get super tight there just by hand with this giant knob. So this guy has a little kind of notch in there, and the screw fits in there. So when you put this down, you just tighten it up just a little bit, and that keeps it from lifting up, but it can still turn freely. And if you want to prevent it from turning, you just tighten this down a little more, um, and now you know it won't turn on you. So you can just do a quarter turn there to loosen it, you know, half turn there, and it's tight again. And this knob has a nice ring of rubber around it. It's a plastic knob, but there's this ring of rubber that makes it pretty darn easy to grip and turn. All right, so compact as it can get, folded away. This guy here is about 18 inches from the top of the table. Now, this joint here will rotate 180 degrees, so you, know, you have that flexibility there. Now the joint at the top will do a full 360, so you can rotate it all the way around, and basically that's the 
full extent there, and then there's this knob here to turn it in. Now, one thing I already kind of am annoyed by is that on the bottom joint, the knob is facing me. On the top joint, the knob is on the other side. So theoretically, if you didn't want this to be overhead and just wanted something really high up here, this will get to about 45 inches off the top of the table. So you could mount a light or a camera up here um, and be pretty darn overhead. Now I think more likely might be something like this where you have a camera mounted here kind of over the center of the table. And that right there is going to put this stud at 32 inches over the center of the table. Now you could of course go farther out by taking this guy Now you could go farther out by taking this guy down and all the way out like that, lock these knobs down, um, and it would support a camera over here, approximately 18 inches over the table. So one thing I've noticed is none of these arms telescope, so you don't have any distance control other than by kind of raising the height. So if you raise the height, you can get closer in. If you lower the height, you can get farther out but there's no telescoping control to get it at exactly this point at this height. Now you can, you know, do some hybrid stuff like that because you have a ball head here, but then you start having this stuff hanging in your workspace. And I suppose you could probably do something like that, um, depending on this ball head mount, how far you needed to tilt that up because it does only go up to about 90 degrees like this. So it doesn't include a manual, it's just kind of a service and warranty card, and they have a QR code which just kind of goes to support. I don't know if there's an online manual or not. Um, and you wouldn't think, but you wouldn't really, really need a manual, it's just a clamp and a couple of knobs. Um, but I've determined that I wanted to look up the correct way to use this particular joint, because I said it was a 360 degree joint, and you know, I'm able to spin it around 360, but it gets tight and it starts clicking as I get to this point. So I don't think you can continuously go around. I think it's kind of, it's really tight here, and then I can go around and, you know, go that far, so there's 360, and I can keep going, and it looks like it's kind of loosening up if I do that. Um, so I don't think it's kind of a continuous turn. I think it has, you know, an area where it easily works back and forth in, and then if you go too far in one direction, um, it kind of gets tight, and like right here, it kind of starts to click and chunk, chunk, chunk. Um, and so I'm not 100% certain you can just keep spinning this as much as you want. I think you kind of want to be working within a certain 360 degree range, but there's nothing in the little piece of paper that came with it that really tells me for sure any limitations on this joint. Now, presumably, you would basically set this in the spot you wanted and mostly leave it there, with the possible exception of folding it up for storage. Um, one thing about folding it up for storage is that the ball head, the handle on the ball head, can interfere with this thing going all the way closed. And you know, if you had a camera hanging off of this, you can't really close it up for storage with a camera in this side. You'd have to kind of move it off to that side. Um, and maybe you're going to leave it that way or not. But this, you know, the ball head's kind of rotating, and and so. You know, it, its stowed position does require the camera equipment or the ball head be positioned kind of out of the way there. Um, you know, I, I guess you could stow it straight up, you know, and just stow it like that, and then you don't have to worry about any of that. Now, the camera holder is perfectly acceptable. It has kind of your GoPro style mount off of this end, and then it's, you know, pinchy spring to grab a, a cell phone camera. Um, it only has a quarter by 20 down here. It does not have one here. Instead, it has kind of a cold shoe mount here. So you could potentially put some type of accessory for a cold shoe mount there. But that means that you have to mount it like this. You can't mount it off the side like that. Um, and that might be fine because this metal ball head here has a um, 90 degree slot you can slot into. So this metal ball head, if you loosen this screw a lot, you can rotate the top of it around. So if you need to fold this up without this handle hitting the arm, you can rotate it that way and then tighten it back up. Or if you want to rotate 90 degrees, you can spin around and put that 90 degree rotation wherever you want it 
and then when you tighten this guy up, it tightens not only the ball on the top, but also the rotation against the bottom piece. Now because it's clamped to your table, I don't think the weight really matters too much, but some people want to know. You know, the clamp here is 12 and a half ounces, and then the arm assembly itself is 31 ounces, um, and then the little cell phone clippy thing here is just about another ounce. And you know, if you really care, the 10 Velcro zippy ties are another third of an ounce. So all together with the clamp and the weight and say the cell phone mount and the zippy ties, um, you're looking at 45 ounces overall. Um, or if you're looking at that in grams, we're looking at 1.2 kilograms. Now my crafting table actually has this metal bracket here. And so that metal bracket means I can't get this any closer than that. So it's actually hanging off by about a quarter inch. But you know, it's got plenty of room on top of the table for a good grip. All right, so on my crafting table, I have a light. Um, and this guy here, actually, kind of in the default setup here, is a little bit above the light. My table's 48 inches wide. Um, and right now, my phone is actually focused kind of on this side of the table here. Um, and so it is avoiding the edge of this in the phone field of view with the 2x zoom. Um, but it's a little higher than I would typically use, and it's a little farther off to the side. And so I've been kind of playing around with doing things like lowering this guy, you know, do something like this, um, and then moving the phone like this. And so I think this is typically where I'd have the phone set up. Um, so now one issue is I have this kind of off to the side, which isn't horrible. Um, it's not blocking the light too badly. I might have to move it forward or backwards a little bit. Um, and it has a, a decent clear view, but you do have to kind of adjust by doing this zigzag up and down thing um, to get it kind of where I would typically keep my phone. But this is a small rig mount. Um, I personally feel like the phone adapter was thrown in as a kind of, hey, if you're happening to use a phone, you know, here's, a, here's something to, to keep you happy with that. Um, but really, these are designed for cameras, I think. And so here I have a Sony A6300 camera. And with that camera, unless you have a specialized lens, you're probably going to want to be about this far away. Um, and so I found that with the camera mount up here, it's just about right. I should also point out, I haven't had to lock these down yet. Um, you know, there was enough tension in these adjustable arms here that it was just holding my camera up there. Um, and so if you lock these down, you know, you could put, you know, a lot more weight on that thing. And it might, you know, go down a little bit as you did it, but then it would hold that weight. Um, so I have, you know, no concerns at all about a camera being mounted up here. Um, and it works pretty well for that type of distance. This is about to the center of my table here. And it's, you know, it's missing this bit here. You know, I can move that a little bit if it wasn't, but it, it's, it's shooting right down through here. Now, from a mount stability standpoint, I'm going to start my camera recording. And so, you know, my camera's recording my hands down here on the surface here. Um, now, if I push on the table, my entire table is moving. Um, and the camera moves with the, the table. And so the video feed, it's hard to tell that the table is moving from that video feed. And so this guy's locked nicely to the table. I can move the entire arrangement where my lights and the camera and everything moves. And there's a little bit of vibration. The light's vibrating a lot more than the camera, the camera stand here. So it seems to have a little bit of dampening in here, um, but it's holding it quite steady. All right, so I have a camera set up here, and this is a little higher. I normally try to probably mount my camera here and use the regular lens, but I've gone up here and I've used the 2x zoom lens, um, so the camera's not seeing the light. And it's seeing a pretty good view. It's getting all the way to the front surface here, all the way back to there. Um, Width-wise is about that wide, so it's, it's getting an area in there on my table, which is about what I work in when I'm taking videos anyways. Now for storage, I do need to either leave this kind of sitting at an angle or loosen this guy so I can rotate it out of the way. So this is what I had before. It's an all light, um, you know, kind of a cell phone 
camera arm, and it has the telescoping rods here, and then you could telescope up like that, and they have several telescoping up rods. I never actually telescope those two up. I would typically just put my phone here um, and use the regular non-zoom lens. Um, and so for putting this away, you basically just rotate it back out of the way. Um, now, no comparison build quality. The small rig unit is nicer. Um, the only real thing I like about this guy is that ability to zoom in and out so I can get that exact distance and you can stop you know, anywhere you want. Um, with this guy you kind of have to do an up and down angle thing to figure out the distance. Um, you know, other than that, this guy is sturdier, um, it's heavier for sure. It, now the one thing is it is really easy to adjust these things, spin them out of the way, put them back. It's you know, really fast and easy to adjust. The adjustment, on this, the adjustment on the small rig, um, even with these guys turned all the way to the loosest setting, you know, it is a bit of effort to move it. So you know it's going to stay where you, where you put it, but it's not just pop, 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 and there it is. It's very much, you know, you are physically manhandling this thing around to where you're going to set up your camera. All right, here's my final thoughts on this guy. Things I don't like. There's no rubber on the bottom of this metal clamp thing. Um, the thing here is not a user's manual. It doesn't even go to a user's manual online. So there's no manual describing exactly how to use it. I think I figured it out correctly, but I just don't know for sure because there's no manual to read. Um, and it's big and heavy. Uh, well, I mean, it's not super, super heavy, but it's big and heavy compared to a lot of cell phone overhead mounts. So things I like, it's big and heavy. It's got this giant clamp. Um, these guys have a lot of resistance, and so, you know, when you put something there, it's just going to stay there. You don't even have to tighten these knobs down unless you're putting a heavy camera on it. Um, they're considered cable management. You know, they're thinking about, hey, are you the type of person who is, you know, permanently mounting a camera in a position? You set it up on this thing, you tighten these knobs down, you, you know, run the cable down the arm, it's not going anywhere. Um, so I feel like the cell phone mount is kind of just, hey, we realize some of you like shooting with cell phones, so we're going to throw this in here. Um, there's nothing super special about it. It works just fine. It's pretty much the only plastic part in the entire thing. Um, but everything else is heavy. I mean, it's not, I mean, it's not entirely true. There's plastic in the knobs and so forth. But, you know, it doesn't feel like the cell phone mounts plastic. So I feel like the cell phone mount was thrown in, hey, we know some of you like to use cell phones, but it's not really optimized for cell phone. I think this is optimized for big, heavy cameras. Um, you know, so it's pretty darn big when you expand it out. It covers a lot of distance, and you can mount a big, heavy camera, lock these things down, and it's staying where you put it. Um, it's very stable, um, and so there's, you know, most of these parts are metal. I especially appreciate this little guy here where you can you know, rotate around, adjust your camera, and when you lock this, it locks both the rotation and the camera ball. Um, so it is a visually big apparatus you know this is a big arm I've seen a lot smaller arms so if you're just trying to mount you know a cell phone for a camera view of something there's probably smaller lighter weight arms that will do the job just as well I think this is really best if you're mounting a DSLR or a really bigger camera or even a light I mean it's a quarter by 20 mount you can put a light on it instead of a camera now for my crafting table I think I am going to stick with my original mount not because it's better. The small rig mount is arguably better in most ways. Um, the only thing I like about this guy more is that, A, it's a little smaller, so it doesn't take up as much visual space when it's not in use, but also it has this nice rotation, you know, so I can rotate it out, and it has this nice telescoping action so I can telescope it out, and I drop my phone in, I'm ready to go. I'm not the guy who puts a camera permanently above this thing. It's just every so often, I want to put a phone in here, take a video while I'm painting on something, and then when I put this away, you know, I just flip this around, go back, and it's put away. So I'm not using that most of the time, and so I kind of appreciate the smaller, lighter nature of that because it is just holding up a cell phone. So I don't have any real objections to the small rig mount 
other than if you're putting it up and down a lot, um, it's kind of takes some effort to move those joints around. Um, and it, visually, it, it has a much bigger, heftier appearance when it's just sitting there not in use.